Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we found the House of Rods and Chains, the very, very far northeast of the map. It's a place where rubbery men and Mr. Barleycorn, whatever they happen to be, I'm still not sure, uh, they live inside of the carcass of a messenger. That's what these bones or limbs are on the map. Let's go deeper into the house. Because I've already explored it part of the way. Yeah, we got to this point and then I climbed back up the throat. Or back up to the throat. But this time, let's explore it. Drowning coils, shapeling vats, or deeper. Drowning coils, that sounds like a whole lot of fun. The rubbery men here are less civilized than their topside brethren. They wear no hats and carry no newspapers. Eyes watch you from within the walls. Lost in biology. Your explorations lead through hardened sphincters that scrape your flesh. Ugh. You squeeze through twisted doors designed to be opened by something entirely unlike a hand. The rooms down here are bowl-shaped, many half-filled with water or unrecognizable fluid. Their doors are as likely to lead to ceilings or high up on the concave walls as anywhere convenient for you. Most are empty or piled high with rubbery waste. I don't know if they mean rubbery waste in that it's the waste from the rubbery men or if they mean literally the rubbery men's waste is rubbery. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine what that would look like. A rubbery waste. visit the shapeling vats. Rubbery men head into the labyrinth of corridors and return with rainbows of damp amber. So the amber is coming from the body of the messenger. You carefully traverse the thin, treacherous path lined with endless, deep, slime-filled cavities and basins. All around, the rubberies work at refining and reshaping amber into new forms and colors. They pause only to stare unblinking at you until you move past, more awkward than hostile. Oh, I can add soft forms of amber to a shapeling vet. Oh, soft amber, soft blue amber. Hmm, so there's actually four colors. Yeah, green, red, blue, and then I guess none? Uncolored? Observe the rubbery men. What is the purpose of their work? The exact relationship between rubbery men and their amber remains their own business. In London, amber is all much the same. Here, they experiment, combining it with other materials to transmute it. A few flute excitedly as golden amber pours from the vats. It is the rarest and most beloved flavor. Sometimes amber emerges treacle thick and black as tar. The effort and resources that went, in, went into it is wasted. The effects of different substances will be the same for each captain. They may not be the same for future captains in your lineage. Huh. Huh. It's also interesting that they call it a flavor. Are these things actually being consumed in some way? Eaten? Are they a food source? Let's go back to the drowning coils. And then head deeper into the house. The path is treacherous. The floor is slick. The air hangs with resentment that becomes less civil and more feral as the light fades away. Deep in the spawning morass, the alkali-infused darkness or alkali? Alkali-infused darkness burns your eyes. Down here, the rubbery men commingle in quivering colonies and leech from weeds that sprout from pools of viscous white ammonia. The only light comes from smoldering Apossian pyres, each attended by a rubbery chorus howling in endless lament. My god. Oh, down here I can assign crew to hunt for amber. What does that take? Five crew... And three supplies. I get the feeling, <laughs> given what we know of this place, that there's a pretty good chance the crew's not coming back, or not all of them. 
It seems like a damn dangerous place. Just slip on the floor in some pitch black place and slip through a sphincter into some random organ where you'll be digested or something. Let's explore the vast cavern. The feral rubberies stare at you from their nests. Rot and ammonia. The air down here is slowly melting the house's innards, collapsing lost rooms and corridors into one rank, endless cavity lined with calcified abscesses. The foul liquid regularly rises to your knees, an itchy rash develops where it touches. Occasionally your feet kick against chips of amber in the mire. There must be larger pieces here, but hunting for them is not a one-person job. Not one for a captain, at least. Let's assign a crew. This cavern stretches out for days. Your chosen volunteers should be safe in their waders if they don't anger the feral rubberies. Comfortable, perhaps not. <laughs> oh, I just lost five crew. The chosen crew splash out into the dark with a look that could politely be called resignation. Assuming all goes well, they'll be back from their expeditions in a week. Oh, okay, they're not dead. It's just you don't see the result right away. Whew, thank God. <laughs> uh, well, that means I have to leave this place, I guess. A week. How fast does a week go by? Not that fast. Like, I don't think I should just float out here for a week. I mean, I guess I could explore around here. I forgot, what do they sell here? Fuel and supplies, so they have everything I need, actually. Can I safely... I'm not sure if I can safely pilot this ship with five people. Can't check right now, though. Not until I leave the deep spawning morass. Go back up. Climb up to the throat. Don't think there's anything to do here unless I have amber, which I don't yet. Let's return to the broken carapace. And I, I guess that's all I can do for now. Yeah. Oh, right. They have the, the bargain of the Navaratine gemstones. Do I have a quest for Navartine gemstones? I don't. I'm trying to think if I want to take stuff back to Pan. Or just explore around here. Let's just explore around here. So it's the 13th of November, so I should come back on the 20th of November. That'll be a week. Yeah. I forgot how low my hole is, my god. If I get into trouble, I'm just getting the hell out of here. I want to explore more of this corpse. I want to find the whole body on the map if I can. Let's reveal the whole thing. forth. Is that part of the flesh? Like a fleshy fold? Piece of skin? God, that looks so creepy on the map. I mean, it looks creepy in person, too. Oh, I hear something. Oh, 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 it's those things that fought me all the way here, right? That's how I got so hurt. And I think it's coming after me. To 
disturbance in the night. You wake suddenly. Your candles have burned low and your eyes are still heavy with sleep. You're alone in your cabin. The winds of the wilderness howl outside. You can feel the motion of the engine below you. Something isn't right. Follow the scent of burning. It's not something cooking, and the alarms hasn't uh, the alarm hasn't been sounded. What could it be? You follow the scent of smoldering past the galley and up to the bridge. A fire roars in an impromptu pit. A group of your engineers are arguing about the best way to distribute the coal. Someone is roasting marshmallows. Ah, kind of wasting fuel. Eh, it's fine. This place is creepy as hell. I'll join them. It'll be good for morale, probably. Yeah, reduced terror by a lot, actually. You take advantage of the smoke to sneak in and steal a marshmallow. You eavesdrop on conversations. No one says anything even remotely scandalous about you. Eventually, you reveal yourself to discover everyone had already noticed. <laughs> Ale is passed, marshmallows are eaten. Only after many hours is the fire allowed to burn low. And we're safe. Ah, it's been two days. Got a while more to go, but yeah, revealed the whole dang thing. It's very symmetrical looking in, in how it's, I don't know if it just died like this or if they moved it here. But yeah, it mentioned somewhere that it didn't look like there was no visible cause to how this thing died. How this thing was killed. It's not like it was just blown open. So I wonder how it was killed. Obviously the outside's pretty intact. Okay, I think I'm gonna go east, like just down here, along the edge. Sorta of towards Caduceus. This is the Inklings, Captain, an engineer says, where bad ideas come from. This place is surprisingly empty. I keep finding nothing. Again, nothing. Yeah, that's the stuff we saw around Caduceus. It's a weird, like, nest type woven things. Looks like they stretch on for a while. Colors of stone loom in the sky. You're entering the Grave of Roses. Sovereigns. Or we'll gain experience, a sky story, and hear tales. Let's do that. 50 experience and a sky story. Ah, 
blind hermitage. Press gang the hermit into your crew. <laughs> we can recruit the hermit? Drag them from their cave, put them to work. I mean... No? I'm not gonna like... It sounds like I'm basically face uh, forcing them to work for me. That's weird. Also, honestly, I'd rather do these other things. Mm, supplies for a savage secret and a little more. Or, oh, right, that takes seven savage secrets to get the Crimson Promise and the Mystery. So, no, let's just trade supplies. One supply for one savage secret. That's worth it. Anything new here? This, I think this might be new. The hermit takes your supplies, beckoning you into their cave. They shrink from the dim light of your candle, cowering and chewing on their ragged, bleeding fingernails. The cave rock shows the effort of their labors, wet crimson symbols, and, and scratched down snippets from the other side of sanity. Behind them all, a truth to be whispered, but never spoken. Seventeenth of November, we could probably head back. Let's head back, but go back a different way. Let's go this way, and then go, like, straight north. Explore this patch here. I gotta remember, I can't really get into a fight. At least not with anything difficult. My hole is... Oh, my hole is so low, it is so not worth it. Also, I'm low on crew as well. Possibly, possibly below the safe manning number, I'm not sure. Ooh, this is all a dead end. Okay, where is the safe manning number? I always forget. Is it possession? Yes. <laughs> safe manning number's six, and I have five. Maybe I should have recruited the hermit. a blind hermitage? Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, should I get them into my crew then? <sighs> I probably should. I don't know what the effect of having under the recommended crew number is, but it's not good, I'm sure. Okay. This says drag them from their cave, but I'm not dragging them from their cave. They say, hey, I want to join up and work. Screw this place. I don't like my home. It sucks. The blind hermit's emaciated muscles are no match for your grip. You drag the terrified wretch from the cave. No, I did kidnap them. Where the cold Eleutherian light glints in the tears of their milky gray eyes, limp and defeated, they put up no further resistance. Oh my god. It sounded sort of like that's what it was, but like, yeah, that's literally what it, what it was. Oh, I don't like that at all, but I can't undo it. Uh, let's pretend that didn't happen. Elizabeth would not do that. That's 
sudden music shift. Oh, and it's the 20th. My people should be ready when I get back. Dim your light, quiet your heart. The grievers are here. Should I dim my light? Ah, I don't think I should. My terror is so high. And I also don't think I should go check out this horror over here because my terror is so high. Incognito Princess says, What is that objectionable odor? Give me my pomade? Pomade? I don't know what that actually is. Which means I should look it up. I'll do that when I'm back at port. pomade and it's a scented ointment or oil for dressing the hair so basically a perfume type thing to cover up the scent let's get our people back guess we enter the house we have to go no we can just do it from the top level retrieve your crew and their amber they should have returned from their scouting trip if you haven't enough space for all your returning crew they will be lost <laughs> that would be sad How many came back? All of them. Good. You meet up with the crew at the designated spot and they hand over what amber they found. That done, they return to the train to take a much needed wash. Yes, take a break, thank you. Two chunks of soft amber, so just two chunks of the uncolored stuff. Four of red and two of green, so no blue. Now, I don't know, what do I do with this stuff? I could go to that weird place where you mix them together. Um, well, let's go to the market. What can we get with them at the market? I forgot. Pay for an evening's rest. This will lower your terror. Oh, that would be good. My terror is so high. When's that cost? Three chunks of red amber. Trade for fuel. Wait, one chunk of blue amber. I have a blue chunk? Did I get that from something else? I don't remember. Certainly didn't get it here. Go mingle your choirs. In old London, society condemned close interactions with the rubberies. I don't know what that means. I don't know what this is going to do. Trade for curiosity. Uh, we've already done that. So we'll exchange your stories for Amber. I need three chunks to do this. Sample rose cheeked cook's wares. Not sure what that would do either. Maybe give me supplies? Well, I definitely need the terror thing, right? So let's pay for an evening's rest. A rubbery man stands guard in front of sleeping alcoves. They appear to be natural formations. So we're at 57, and. Oh, that didn't do much at all. Well, I mean, 10%, actually. That's significant, but, like, I thought three chunks of red amber would be worth more than that. The pillow turns out to be a stone. <laughs> the curve of your assigned alcove bends your spine until your head almost touches your feet. 
<laughs> there is no privacy and no way to block out the slucks and contented flurbles of the rubberies in adjoining alcoves where they effortlessly slip into lip-smacking torpor as smoothly as custard sloshing around a bowl. <laughs> God, that was a vivid description. They effortlessly slip into lip-smacking torpor as smoothly as custard sloshing around a bowl. Oh, that is such a disgusting way to put it. Should I commingle my choirs and see what it does? Sure. In old London, society condemned close interactions with the rubberies. I, oh, fuck, I gained terror again. <laughs> I gained five tales of terror, though. A night to remember. In a dark, moist alcove, you sing softly together. The harmonies are intricate and intimate. Tentacles twine fondly around your fingers. Your foreheads rest together. Its skin spongy and slick against yours. You can almost feel its thoughts flashing inches from yours. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, five tales of terror... Uh, the devils of Karelin claim to be experts in the assessment and improvement of the soul. They would describe yours as pungent, febrile, and unappetizing. Ew. Oh, maybe this is how I got the blue. Junk. I traded three Eletherian mysteries? Yeah, that's a lot of mysteries to trade. I don't want to do that. So, I have one green, and I think that might be it. And then I probably have some of the uncolored stuff. Any trade for curiosities that I can do? Uh, yes, if I had some blue and red. Alright, this trades for a random trade good up to five of them. Let's go deep down and mix what little amber I have and see if I can get something out of it. Descend deeper. The shapeling that's right? Oh, do I need more? Yeah, you need three, 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 three. Three of any one color. Okay, well, I guess I'm done here for now. I do want to send another expedition down. I don't, although I don't want to wait around here for another week and come back to him like right away. I want to do other stuff and just come back at some point in the future. But yeah, let's send out another expedition. Can I send out two expeditions at one time? If I did that now, I would end up with one person left on the ship, which I guess would be me. Head deeper in. Assign crew. Mm, yeah, it looks like you can't do another expedition. That disappears. Okay. I have to press so many things just to get out of this place. I'm so deep in. There we go. All right, let's get these Navaratine gemstones. Let's get a bunch of supplies and fuel. Not the most ideal combination of stats there. Probably should have more supplies, but eh, it's fine. Okay, let's go back to Pan and regroup, heal, get my terror down, all that good stuff. I'm really scared about the trip back, to be honest. In fact, I think I'm actually... Let's go down to Caduceus. Yeah, let's go to Caduceus and then go back to Pan. So I go like this. Instead of just going straight. Or like off to this side where I originally came in. Because over here there was tons of those... Uh, I think they're called Departed. The super scary and super powerful enemies. My hole's not good. I want to avoid them. And I also don't want to hit this terror or horror either. So I'll bring you back when I'm at Caduceus discontent because of the high high terror mm, frozen corpse spin past the window oh I can get my nightmares up even more it's already at two though I don't think I want it that high 
No. Jettison some supplies as like a offering. The rations spin away into the stellar mists. You'll mourn the biscuits. Some of them had chocolate on. Ooh. Papery sphere like wrapped sheets of dried skin drifts on the wind. I haven't seen one of these curators' eggs in a while. There's most likely a curator nearby, right? I'm pretty sure I could take them pretty easily at this point, though. Terror went up a bit, but nothing tried to attack me. Another blind hermitage. This time I'm not going to kidnap the poor hermit into working for me. Share a meal with the hermit. I don't think I've seen that before. Stew warms over a small fire. The mixture is thick with salted meat and root vegetables. The hermit peers at you and gnaws encouragingly. If you're starving, this will buy you some time. Okay, so probably maxes out whatever my current hunger is. Or my current supply. No reason to do that right now. Observe the hermit. Something still drives them down here in the dark. We'll give you an Eleutherian mystery. Yes. Ah, right. Increases terror. At Caduceus now. I know I can't do anything in, like, the heart of this place because of the state of my soul. But, uh, what is this? The winds of elsewhere. Was this here last time? The winding hillside paths are meandering and willful. No, this is definitely new. Wind picks up, carrying a scent of honey and a soothing sibilance. It blows from the caves. Either explore the dark side of Caduceus or investigate a mirror shard. Hmm. Well, the dark side of Caduceus sounds like something that would increase my terror, which I can't afford right now. So let's investigate a mirror shard. You found it in the wiry grass. It's silver and sharp. A whisper from beyond. A golden flicker deep in the glass catches your eye. You pick it up and stare at it, trying to find the source in the undulation. A stabbing pain runs through your hand. Blood drips from a cut that could almost be a bite. You drop it, but that night you dream. Vision of the heavens. So there's nothing more I can do here. In that case, let's buy the selection of Immaculate Souls. Very good bargain. Three, four, five. So I need to get rid of two things if I want to fit all of those in. Oh, I can't sell them fuel. I guess I'll sell them supplies. I could also just jettison the fuel. I don't know if it really matters. And back to Pan. Oh, that didn't take long. <laughs> Ten seconds out of port. Well, one second out of port and crack glass. I don't have any panes of glass, so leave them broken. Your crew will just have to endure the starlight and the droughts until you reach port. 40% chance of success. Success! Oh, I succeeded, so I only lost two crew. I'm down to four. That's really bad. The board corridors are awash with luminous starlight. It's no surprise when some of the crew are struck down by maladies of the mind. One of them raised at length about the things they saw in the starlight. The imagery lingers with you. Man, I really want to get back to Pan now and repair my hole and get more people. Blind Hermitage. Hmm. Well, I don't want to do this. Observe, because that will give me terror. So let's just trade supplies. Get a savage secret. Ah, oh, that still gives me a little bit of terror. I guess it's worth it. I don't know, I'm at 66%. What the hell am I hearing? That scribe's not making that noise. Is that a fluke? Oh, it's fighting a fluke. Yeah, I am not getting involved in that fight. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Actually, that's really bad. I think it's gonna catch up with me. Like, it's gonna rush. Ah, oh, shit, shit. Shit. Oh, this is really bad. There's so many enemies here. I might have lost the bull. Kategory. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Ugh.
Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Way, 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 way too close for comfort! Oh, fucking hell. What have I wandered into? Oh, Jesus Christ. A fight between... a couple scribes and a fluke and the bull tankery? Oh my god. Those hits increase my terror. As well as hurting me. I think I'm okay now, but Jesus Christ, 78%. Sweet, sweet pan. Ah. <sighs> Reduced my terror by a lot, but it's still way too high. It's the hour of veracity. Clocks are not welcome in pan. Instead, the musical piping... Uh, yes, 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 that's... That's always the same. But this, an hour maybe of any... No, that's also the same. Oh, actually, this is all the same. This is the new stuff. When the word eaters are abroad... Twice, Eleutheria has been turned upside down by storytellers. Now the profession is prohibited in Pan. During the hour of veracity, the word eaters bare their feet, cover their faces with ash, and roam the city, confiscating stories. Let's avoid them as I go about my business. 94% chance of success. Yeah, I think we've done this one before. Success. Gain a mystery. All oh, right, we can sell the egg here. I still don't want to sell the eggs, though. I want to see what they have in them. Uh, what can you do with it, though? Sell it for Eleutherian Mysteries. Hmm. That is tempting. How many mysteries will you give me? Let's just... Let's just see. Six mysteries. Okay. That's worth it. The man takes the egg and holds it up to the light. He rotates it carefully, checking for cracks, perhaps. Finally, he grunts. As payment, he leans close and whispers half-truths of how the word-eaters got their name. Let's get people. How many can this give me? Up to four crew. Oh, that's not much. The higher your hearts, the more reliable this will be. I think they changed this in the Wayfair update. Like, at the least, I think they changed the whole the higher your hearts, the more reliable this will be thing. I think it was like the higher your hearts, the greater chance of it costing less or something like that. Pretty sure it was different. Anyway, 50 sovereigns. One. <laughs> I got one. Jesus. You manage to identify a handful of crew you think won't disappoint, abandon, or murder you. I guess one is a handful. Wait, so when can I do that again? I don't have to wait. Some time. I don't know what that means. A month? I think it was two weeks back in New Winchester, before the patch. But I know they changed it and made it harder to recruit crew, so it could be longer now. Anyway, should I trade port reports, or should I keep them for... Uh, I think the person who wants me to be a, a spy, sort of, a deliverer of information for Eleutheria, or not Eleutheria, um, the Eagles Empyrean, I think they wanted port reports, and maybe they'll pay more for it. Or maybe they'll... Just trust me more if I give them to them. So maybe I'll do that. I don't exactly desperately need Eleutherian Mysteries right now. Let's repair half the damage to my hull with an Eleutherian Mystery. Let's do that twice. Yeah. Pretty good. What am I up to? Hello? There we go. 81 out of 100. That's all right. Also, what is this? Visit a rubbery enclave. Isn't that new? Sloppily painted signs point down a normally quiet back street to where a party appears to be in full flow. A cedar grove off of one of Pan's less traveled pathways is home to a small and enthusiastically political community. A crudely made poster by the entrance reads, Both alike in dignity, showing a human and a rubbery holding a torch aloft. Oh, this is interesting. 
Oh, this is really cool. Speak with the rubbery suffragist. She's surrounded by bohemians and rubberies. The live octopus on her head draws all attention. Oh, look at that portrait. <laughs> the octopus has a glass of wine. Or whatever that is. She moves from bohemian to rubbery with a rosy-cheeked uh, bon mi of inebriation. Occasionally she passes a piece of cheese and fruit on a stick up to the octopus perched in her hair. It extends an arm to accept it. Several of its other arms are occupied with wine glasses gathered from the drinks table. Red, white, rose, eight limbs means never having to choose. Rose or rosé? Might be rosé. Oh, this is definitely the wrong thing to say. Congratulate the suffragist on her pet. I don't... Hmm. I don't think that would be in good taste here. I don't think it's their pet. Um. Ask about her campaign. Her badge is labeled with the Both Alike in Dignity slogan. Vox Populi. The suffragist takes a sip of wine. It's terrible what the rubbery men went through in London, the poor dears. Daedra said someone should do something. Isn't that right? She pops a sausage roll in her mouth. This does not impede her speech at all, for in a slightly higher voice, she continues. The bipedal oppressors, ravagers of the Z. First we open the door for the rubbery men, then the rest of us shall squeeze through. Eight torches raised in protest. With eight arms we rise. The suffragist nods, apparently agreeing with herself. Of course, we have a long road ahead of us, don't we? But what crusade worth fighting for was ever easy? She holds a piece of sausage roll up to the octopus in her hat. After what sounds like the deepest of sighs, it snatches it with a tentacle. Ask where she found such an interesting creature. You've never heard of one quite like it. A talent for voices. I met her while swimming, the suffragist and octopus say in unison. There's an awkward pause. Don't mind Daedra, adds the suffragist. She always gets a little grumpy when her tentacles dry out. A little wine will pep her right up, you'll see. Aw. <laughs> Daedra. Mm, return to the Enclave. I'm definitely not going to ask about the pet, because it's not a pet. Deliver a rubbery man to the Enclave? Oh, right. I took them from their House of, Rod, uh, House of Rods and Chains. I forgot about that. Yeah. The suffragist will offer them sanctuary hair here as long as they need. The assorted members of the Enclave applaud over-enthusiastically when they see your passenger. A bohemian presses a glass of wine on your passenger and takes them off into a corner to discuss injustice against cephalopods. It glances over its shoulder at you, perhaps wondering whether coming here was a terrible mistake. <laughs> 100 Sovereigns, Vision of the Heavens, and 250 Experience, and an Eleutherian Mystery. That's really good. Let's mingle with the crowd. It's rare to see humans and rubbery men together like this. The rubbery men look uncomfortable in their ill-fitting suits and clutching glasses of wine they never even try to sip. But the bohemians are doing their best to make them feel at home. The suffragist ensures none of them are left alone for too long, with the octopus on her head seemingly able to act as a basic translator. Of course, she might simply be trying to be friendly, but speaking to her does put the new arrivals at more ease. So I guess this exists here since I got the rubbery man to take back to Pan, and that's why this is here. I was hoping for more to do. I mean, look at this. Look at this freaking portrait. I was really hoping there'd be more to do with this, but I don't think so. I guess that's it. Return to the streets. The theater thing, that's not... doesn't... yeah, we've done that before. It doesn't change or anything like that. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I think I'm going to do some more exploring.